What's going on everybody, C4 here. Welcome back to the channel and today we're here for episode 11 of our Madden 21 Detroit Lions franchise mode. Now yesterday I did not have an episode because I let my boy uh, hook me up with the 17 game schedule which we now have all set up here for year two of the Detroit Lions. Because I mean if you do year one with 17 games, you got to want to do every other year with 17 games and did he at least give you guys something to to help me influence while we were waiting we had a decision to make here at quarterback do we go with the professional uber realistic approach of you go with jared goff as your as your placeholder bridge stop gap starter right 27 still i mean 27 right still 27 and ease in Spencer Rattler, who we're, we're hoping is going to be absolutely the next franchise quarterback, great franchise quarterback to take over from Matt Stafford. Because last week we just saw Jared Goff, eh, wasn't bad, wasn't good. I also think there's an argument to be made that because it's because Spencer Rattler is not OP. 72, normal. Got a lot of work to do with this kid. You want to play him as soon as possible. And it's Madden and it's my team. And if it's my team, that's the decision I'm making. I'm, I'm going to be going with that. We're going to go with Spencer Rattler. So we, we just got to get him the snaps. We have to give him the snaps. Every game week that there could be a potential QB dev trade scenario that he's not playing in is going to be detrimental to the long-term outlook of this squad. So I'm also... When we're making him QB1, we're going to go and we're going to throw Jared Goff here on the trade block. I don't know if anyone in their right mind is going to trade for that contract. I don't even know what the implications would be of, of, our, of our salary cap trading him with the dead money and stuff. I just want to see what the market is because, I mean, like you're looking at our squad here. I always like to acquire more draft picks. That's probably the one guy that might have some trade value. I mean, we could put some respect on, say, someone like Cephas, who I really do like at wide receiver, and, and just see maybe he can go to a team that he can get more reps in. But I like having that depth here. Um, I have adjusted. I added plus five. We did not in. We did not have one injury last season. My injury sliders are on a ten, I think. Let me go see. I up. I upped them just a little bit. Whatever they're on, I'm. I'm pretty sure uh, league settings here. That's not on that. It would be sliders. Come on, C four. Uh, for game pace sliders, our injuries. Like I, I hate, but yeah, our injuries were on ten, and I'm gonna knock it up to fifteen because we did not have. I, and maybe there was a couple injuries like in game, but no one missed games last year. So I'm assuming we're not gonna get over the clean bill of health here in year number two. So you're gonna want some depth at those positions, and hey, you gotta want some depth at those positions. Could we come back to bite us in the ass if we go Spencer Rattler as QB one? Maybe an injury happens, and then we trade Jared Goff. And we don't have that guy that can step in. We'll have to look for ulterior options. But again, yeah, looking at the squad here, I'm not too worried about any other player as a potential trade piece. Maybe, you know what, honestly, maybe Walt Harris. Just throwing him up there. And you, you could also argue, let's let's throw up the two edge rushers, right? I mean, Trey Flowers has been on the trade block. We could throw Aquara up on the trade block just because Drake Jackson... Another first round pick, with the dev trait, probably want to get him on the field sooner than later. That should be something that we can just at least explore and see if there's you know some moves to be had. Other than that though, boys, I am going to sim out this entire preseason. Today's episode, we got the Dolphins week one, the Eagles in week two, and you know me. We're going to play that Dolphins game, and then we're going to sim against the Eagles because I don't really want to play against Philly. But for Jared Goff right now, the Dolphins are offering us a third round pick in 2024. Well, you know, that's a tough call. Third round pick, that's usually like going to be guys for the most part that are like in the 60s versus having an insurance policy. I think right now, third round, I mean, realistically, a third round is probably as good as you're going to get for Jericho. Maybe I was hoping we could finesse him. Like if we get a second rounder from anybody, I think I would pull the trigger. But the fact that it's like, would I rather another third round pick or... Uh, no, like a, you know, there's no other quarterback that's going to be as talented as Jared Goff that we could bring in right now to be the insurance policy. The Spencer Rattler, I think I'd rather keep that insurance policy, not incur the big dead cap, and just not have a third round pick. All right, this is going to be my big question for you guys to come out of this episode: is that we've already seen those kind of low ball offers for Jared Goff, and I, I think my logic kind of makes sense, right? Because you know my luck. 
up the injuries, and of course, the young QB is going to get like, you know, absolutely something, something's going to happen to his shoulder, something like that, and we're going to need our backup quarterback. But I now am looking on the trade block just to see like, all right, well, what else can we try to look to manufacture here? And there's some teams out here that their number one team need is quarterback. So we may be able to start and reach out to other teams offering Jared Goff as a potential package deal. And there's two players in particular that I kind of want to float out there that I absolutely think if I could Jared Goff and maybe something a little bit like a nice little side dish that's not too expensive, I, I could float that trade. First up is Darius Slayton, the wide receiver from the New York Giants. He's an 82 overall, 25. I think he has a star dev. 61190 star dev. 93 speed, 92 acceleration, 84 catching, 85. He's literally just would be like a better version of like Brashad Perriman in pretty much every way. And as you can see there with the little XP bar, the longer we wait, I mean, he's going to be up to an 83 overall sooner than later. I like Darius Slayton. I'm not going to say I like him because he's in the NFC East. I don't dislike him, which is pretty much as good as gold because if I, I dislike a lot of players in the NFC East. So I absolutely could pick up that phone to the New York Giants and be like, hey, Danny Dimes sucks. Maybe we'll float you Jared Goff and, you know, fourth round pick for Darius Slayton, something like that. But Darius Slayton, absolutely, I'm very intrigued by. And I think that we maybe could get our foot in the door by offering Jared Goff. Second player on this list is on the defensive line. And that's Matt Ioannidis. A little bit older, a little bit more of like a win now, but I do believe he'd be an absolute beast for us as a defensive end. Now, where would he play? Whose spot would he take over from? Uh, it'd be, it would be surplus requirement, but it would be kind of getting best player available on the squad here. Because Ioannidis, uh, 85, 28, I think he's star dev, um, 97, I mean, absolute hoss. It, it, be, it wouldn't be as impactful of an upgrade just because I feel like, personally anyways, I'm more attached to Levi Almuzuriki, breakout stud, want to keep him starting. We did just bring in Mo Hurst. Maybe, I mean, 6'3", 310, could go for slightly undersized nose tackle. You know, I would say 310 is the entry barrier to being a defensive tackle on a front three there. So again, another, I think, if we're going to be sending Jared Goff, give it to the NFC East, I really want your guys' feedback. Should we just hold on to Jared Goff, have an insurance policy in place, kind of view it like how the Philadelphia Eagles had Carson Wentz and Nick Foles, or do we go after Darius Slayton, or do we go after Matt Ioannidis? Let me know in the comments section below. I will 100% go with the guidance of you guys on this trade, because I don't really know how to feel. I, I would love these additions, but I also feel like I have bad luck. And it's only a matter of time to Spencer Rattler gets hurt. So 100%, guys, give me your feedback on what we should do with a Jared Goff trade. Now let's get into the regular season. Year two of the Detroit Lions Madden 21 franchise. So say we got a nice little uh, upgrade here for Fred Warner. Taking him up to a 95. Glad that already, already a player of that caliber is going up an overall point with his brand new team. It's a seamless fit transition, an easy fit. He's going to be a star. Week one is finally here. Let's take a look at the Miami Dolphins. More so, let's look at their X-Factor, see if they've made any big moves. They're 77 overall, so this is like, this might be the very first game that we have played so far as the Detroit Lions that we have a higher overall than the team that we are playing. They only have one superstar in Byron Jones, which is, which is, all right, you know, it's one of those things, historically, Miami has been a team that goes all in in free agency, and I guess not. They still got two at quarterback, Running backs, not great. Will Fuller, Devontae Park. Obviously, we got uh, we got the Preston Williams there. Might want a little bit of revenge game. Jalen Waddle there. Gasecki's a beast. O-line does not look very good. Defensively is what it is. You know, you're not seeing on that front seven a whole lot of, like, young superstar talent. They got Brenton Cox here from Florida. He's solid. And it's not bad. You know, obviously, the secondary is a strength of this squad. Uh, with two outside lockdown corners. Byron Jones, good athlete. Xavier Howard, ball hawk. You got Javon Holland, who's a beast of free safety. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, though. I, we're open up this. I mean, we go into every game so far being like, you know, 50-50. We could win it. We could lose it. I'm expecting like a win here. We are better than this Dolphins team in pretty much every single area. On opening drive, Spencer Rattler. Let's see, man. First throw. Boom. Oh my God, I will say this. Having 94 throw power, that's gonna, it's gonna feel so much better than Jared Goff. Oh, wow. There's not a lot of resistance right now from this Dolphins defense. All right, we got third and six in scoring range. 
Ooh. Everything about that left-hand side of the field looks like something is going to be trying to bait me. But we'll see. Make the right read. Either Swift or Perriman is going to be open. And it's Swift. Take the easy pass like a veteran. Like an absolute veteran. Spencer Rattler reads the defense, moves the chains. All right, in the red zone now, we get the change of pace back. Matt Breida against his former team. Just so much speed. He's going to... I love the addition. I love the addition. Because, you know, Matt Breida's not the kind of guy where it's going to be like, man, maybe if he starts looking good, we can have, like, a straight-up committee. No. But when he does come in, you know you got 95 speed, and you got to do some damage. Second and goal. Let's see if we can get Rattler's first tidy. Hawkinson is going to be our read. And he's phenomenal. Safety net of all safety nets. TJ Hawkinson... Touchdown, first career. Hopefully first of like 500 more for Spencer Rattler here in the NFL. And there's first of what is going to be a lot of plays behind the line of scrimmage for Mo Hurst. Turn four chase got the field here, let's go. I love this defensive line right now. I'm liking all the options. Before, I didn't really want to be anyone outside of Amu Zuriki. And right now, even though they got the first down, I'm happy pretty much usering anybody on our D-line. Oh. Okay. Tua's got better. Tua worked on his game. Worked up with, like, Jordan Palmer. We'll start off with a little bit of that. A great cut there by DeAndre Swift to get the first down. Oh, he's so fast! He's so fast! That's a, that one play right there. DeAndre Swift gets the first down. A little bit tired. We sub him Brita. Just way too fast. That is 100% why we signed him in free agency right there. Third and fourth, got the field here. We got Amu Zariki, breakout star from the rookie class last year. This is not a great O-line, but they're doing a good enough job to let Tua be seven to seven so far. There we go, another chance, get off the field. Third and six at about midfield. This is actually be a pretty big play, because we get to stop here, we'll have a decent amount of time to try to get another score before halftime. But right now, ooh, he's gonna be short of the sticks. Nice tackle there, Josh Jackson. Another one of our new signings making his debut, and we hold him to a punt. Our French field goal range. Oh, you want know, to you know, touch stuff. We're not even thinking about that at this point. Third and five. Hawkinson on the inside. Just two. I mean, that's that's a tough matchup for Javon Holland. Just a size mismatch. First and goal. Maybe we can get back to Hawkinson again. He has the inside leverage. There you go. Unstoppable offense. Second toady of the game. Unstoppable. Oh, man, the quick passes are killing us. Say this. Waiting for Fred Warner to make a play. Just, he hasn't really been around the football a whole lot. Thought he would be. But I, I, I would expect by this point, I thought we'd have like two nice PBUs across the middle. And he's uh, a little quiet. Still got, still got a lot of football to play, though, for him to make a play or two. Oh, and Gage 8, what is this, Madden 08? How's this play still a thing? Let's go for it, baby. Fred Warner, make a play. Get off your blocks. It absolutely doesn't happen. Dolphins aren't going away. Actually, a hell of a run, run rep right there. Hunt. Mine. Hey, there we go. Feeling a little bit like that, where it's like, all right, the one time they mess up, it's a big turnover for us. And that's something that's kind of been an issue in Madden franchise mode when you play user versus CPU. But we'll take it as Jeff Okuda picks off to a tag of Ilo. I think that's his first incompletion of the game. But we'll take it. We'll take it. Take a little bit of a shot here. Second and 12. Boom. Boom. Inside to St. Brown. 
Easy. I mean, Browler's been outstanding. 14 to 16, buck 65, two touchdowns, quarter and a bit to play. Fuck, oh, man. Second and 10, and it is absolutely stuff there. I want to do slants. Especially when things have been this efficient. I don't want to pad the stats over slants. Let's do something a little more difficult. Third and 10 on the 13. You can still get a first down and not a tutty. Oh, that's double coverage. Fuck! Ooh, you suck! No. Such a shitty fucking pass. Man, this rate, I will literally give someone like a million dollar contract extension raise if they can get a goddamn pressure on Tua today. This is a shit, like the average overall of a lineman right now on the Miami Dolphins is probably like a 70, 71, somewhere in that range. And they have just been pancaking. This game on a Tuesday, is this Pancake Tuesday? God damn it, someone get home! Just fucking bodied, man. Just fucking bodied. Look, can I get a replay of how fucking embarrassing that was? Look at this. Who's this guy? Robert Hunt? We're talking like a 72 overall against 78, 79 Mohurst. And just, just, just not today, Junior. Yeah, fuck you. You're trying to go Gasecki. Trying to go Gasecki and Ronnie Harrison. Uh, uh, Ronnie Harrison. I think that was a spin rooney I think that's what we call that. The spin rooney Can you dig it, dig it sucker? It, sucker. sucker. Third goal, big time. Bend, don't break. Make them hold for a field goal. And then have the try to have the last position of the game score tidy. That's that's best case scenario right now. They go short of the sticks. We hold no field goal attempt. Oh, midfield there for two minute warning. All oh, the wheels. Got a little bit of wheels on Spencer Rattler. Oh, it's an excellent route. Ran gets the first down a little bit more. Whoa. If he got that in, that's absolute filth. Amon or St. Brown didn't get a death trick, got robbed. Being a fourth round draft pick over a thousand yards. If he got both feet in, that's probably the best touchdown pass we've had so far. Oh my God, it looks good. That looks close, that's a terrible angle. About an half a millimeter too high there. Oh my God. If that's a touchdown catch, I'll say right now, that's the best touchdown we've had so far. Through 11 episodes, it looked good. One foot, I, look, literally the game's just like, ah, we're not gonna give you, let's see the second one there. Quite simply, don't have that camera angle. Come on, Zebra. Give me good news. That stands! Let's go, man! What a, what a pass. What a catch. I can get used to that. Rattler to a Monroe St. Brown. Great coverage, Jamie Collins. I was. I want to be irate, but that was kind of sick. That was a hell of a play. If there's one human being you don't want to for you know, Vert still hurts offense at C4. I got three timeouts. Oh, come. No, not that way. Pick it up. I actually think we might have had Paraben there too. Why? Are, give me some time, baby! Oh, and then that fucking bullshit right there! The fucking one-handed pick! Fuck off! I'll take the, the, the insane touchdown. That's fucking bullshit. Same. Same energy, man. Unbelievable. Ain't 
No way! That's play of the year! That's like the greatest interception of the season. There's no way. There's like 1% probability that would ever happen in real life. Fuck off. Get me out of this shit. Unbelievable. Hey, you want drama? It's a hell of a way to start it, man. It's a hell of a way to remind us like we're playing on a good difficulty. The sliders, everything like that, like that's the challenge that we want. And again, hey, if we could it, If you, if we were the Dolphins in that situation, I'd be losing my mind. I, I will say that last interception, a little egregious. Shouldn't have happened, probably. Like, come on, man, give me a break. That's what I would say on that last pick, but that Will Filler touchdown was filth. That was an awesome game, for the most part. An awesome game that we, I mean, the highs and the lows, peaks and valleys. That Rattler touchdown to Amon Rosé Brown, I thought was enough to do it. And then Tua said, hey, I got 88% completion percentage. Your defense is butt cheeks. And that's, that's where we're at, man. Um, three touchdowns, two picks for Spencer Rattler. I, uh, man, I think that is just... Someone that struggles with interceptions, give me a break, right? Like, the only way... The, I'll say right now, that it was Xavier Howard. At least it wasn't like some 60 overall corner. But like, Xavier Howard should only be making that play if he was in his X-Factor. He wasn't. He was cooled off. Just regular, base Xavier Howard. Absolute trash here. 95 yards there for DeAndre Swift. Tutty for Matt Breida. Seven catches, 77 yards, two tutties. Hawkinson, 56 yards, touchdown to Monroe St. Brown. But yeah, man, that was uh, de defense garbage. Fred Warner paying him top tier. I was not impressed whatsoever. He didn't make a single play. All those, all those were like, hey, they already got five, six yards for first downs that he was making the tackle. One TFL Mohurst. Couple half sacks there. Pick from Jeff Okuda was nice, but really, really embarrassing performance from the defense. Very bad. Like if I was the head coach, I'd be like getting ready to fire the DC after a game like that. Game two of the season opener here. Hopefully we don't go 0-2. Um, I mean, Philly's not OP, right? They still got Jalen Hurts. They got, you know, it's not like we're gonna get ran over, but uh, we start on hot, seven nothing. Love to see Spencer Rattler and the guys get the first victory there. Instant touchdown. Okay, trading tutties there. Still a seven-point lead. Looks like we'll be able to carry that lead into halftime here. Didn't get any points, though. They close up the first half, which is disappointing. But another touchdown there. 24 points for the Lions. Philly is not going away. Feels like if we get a touchdown, they get a touchdown. And we got a three-point lead. Get the little... Oh, that's... There we go. That's excellent. Excellent fourth quarter play right there. From the Lions, who the defense still looks pretty shit, to be completely honest with you. Giving up 31 points, but it's a victory. I'm not going to overly complain. Put up 40, get the victory against Philly on the road. Spencer Rattler. At least this, this is like a sneak peek. That like, he might be pretty damn good in the sim. We play half the games, sim half the games. And if Rattler's going to be good in the sim, I am definitely getting on board with that. Looking at the performance here against Philly. Three touchdowns, one pick. 373 yards, very impressive. Would have been nice to get a clean sheet there. Turns the interceptions, but hey, it is what it is. Young quarterback. Uh, 54 yards, two touchdowns there for DeAndre Swift. We have eight catches, 138 ca uh, yards, and a touchdown for Cephas. 85 and a touchdown for Hawkinson. Uh, Perriman had 74 yards. God damn, receive a touchdown for Bronson Recksteiner. Hell yeah! Defensively, 10 tackles and a sack for Fred Warner. So hey, he played better in the sim for us, which is good. Two TFLs, Mo Hurst. Two TFLs, Levi Amuzuriki. A sack for Malin McNeil and the rookie Jake Jackson. He'll get in his first sack. No interceptions to talk about, but very nice win to break us at 500. And I mean, really, probably should be 2-0. So I'll take that, man. 1-1 one one for the episode. And, you know, at least the loss, that, that L against Miami was like a very good game. Very exciting game. And I hope you guys did enjoy it. So I leave you with the question surrounding Jared Gobb. Do we keep him? Do we look at trying to orchestrate a trade between the Giants and bringing in Darius Slayton at wide receiver? Which again, like that sounds good, but you also got to remember, bringing Darius Slayton going to be less touches for someone like Amon or St. Brown or Cephas if we want those guys to develop in this series. Or do we look at someone like Matt Ioannidis on the football team and trying to improve that defensive line that was not particularly great in the game against the Miami Dolphins? So let me know what you want to see with that in the comment section below. Thank you guys very much for enjoying this series. It very much makes it a lot easier me to come down and we're like i'm having a blast because you know if you guys are liking it i like making it 
and it's a good old time. So thank you for watching. It's always your first time stopping by. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed. Until next time, it's C4. Say peace out. And hey, go watch the Euros. Go watch some footy. The beautiful game, okay? That's what I'm going to do.